Well, welcome everybody to Automating the Emergency Preparedness and Response. We're glad that you guys decided to join us today. Today I have with us Alberto Lugo from Invid. That's that guy. And and Ben Nieves. Did I do it right? <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Yes. Uh, very good. And I'm Dave Lowe. I'm the Gov Brief host. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're glad that you decided to join us today. It, there is a lot of interest in this across the board, obviously from FEMA, DHS folks, as well as other agencies that do support functions for uh, emergency response. And we're very glad that you decided to join us today. And the odd one out that I have to call out is, is the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. Can you figure that one out? So if you're if you're from the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, we definitely want to hear from you. <laughs> quick quick overview of the agenda. We'll go through some introductions. I'll introduce you to the gentlemen that are here. I'll talk about the briefing controls as well as the initiatives, regulations. We'll talk about key issues facing agencies, best practices, including lessons learned. Very important, right, gentlemen? Lessons learned. Very important. And we'll get to some questions and hopefully some answers for you and uh, some procurement options, recommended, recommended action steps and additional resources for you. Uh, and, and the briefing controls, just some quick housekeeping things here. If you like the way that Alberto looks in that check jacket of his, you can make him bigger by dragging this, this, um, this little bar. It could be on the bottom or the top, it depends on your computer, but you can drag that and you can make us larger and, or you can make us disappear altogether if you don't like the way we're dressed today. You could open up that panel on the right-hand side by that little arrow doodah thing. And there are some handouts there for you uh, that include the FEMA documents for National Preparedness Framework, uh, the, the latest version, uh, version four, as well as National Preparedness Goals and inf an information sheet, as well as specific information for, with an MOU for your review, and you can download those and print those out. And then if you want to communicate with us, which is exactly why we're here, this is not just a one-way conversation. We'd like to make it two ways so you can raise your hand with that little icon there. You can chat questions to us throughout the, the presentation. If you did call in on the phone, you need to hit that pound, whatever that number is that's on your on your uh, panel on the side and then pound again and then we can unmute you and we can have that conversation with you if there's something in particular that you don't want to share with the whole group but you do want to communicate directly with with anyone here you can send it to gov support at invidgroup.com and we'll make sure that gets cycled to the proper folks wow now i got that out of the way one more quick disclaimer and that is this event is not affiliated or endorsed by dhs or any other agency and is provided to you the audience for informational purposes only and any participation by you in this is voluntary and it's not committing you to purchase from anybody that's on this so now we can actually talk and have dialogue we got that out of the way and one of the other things we're going to do is we're going to have polls as we go through here and we're going to launch this first one which is why are you here today i'm here because i'm looking for emergency planning response best practices and you can choose i think you can choose multiples but uh my agency is currently has an improvement plan in the works my agency is exploring automated emergency response or my boss made me come and somebody's got to pick that one for sure <laughs> Let us know how this is affecting affecting you. And uh, so far, it's a hundred percent so far that is looking for emergency planning response best practices. Love it, love it, love it. Glad you guys decided to join us. We'll give you another another ten seconds, and then we'll talk a little bit about what's happening um, in in your space, and we'll we'll tee up Alberto. So five, four, three two and one and you can do it i know you can and close it out all right very good so here we go let's take a look at this look at this 100 percent are looking for emergency planning response best practices fantastic so there you go we're glad we're glad that you decided to join us today aren't we guys so with that i'm gonna i'm gonna tee you up uh, alberto tell us about envy we know that you're based in puerto rico nothing ever happens with with emergencies in puerto rico earthquakes or hurricanes or nothing right not at all dave thank you for having us my name is alberto as you said and i'm the president of invit and we have offices in virginia and crystal city actually and in puerto rico our main office and our headquarters are based in puerto rico uh, we just filled a 5.3 a few minutes ago 
quick. Um, um, we are a full service IT company with uh, over 17 years of experience in the field. And since Hurricane Maria, we started developing actually emergency response software uh, with EM Group. And we also work with Agile methodology for software development and uh, SharePoint Consulting. We just acquired our GSA revenue a couple of weeks ago. So we're happy to announce that. And uh, if you can go forward. Absolutely. Our services are span around four main areas, enterprise software development, mobile applications, web portals, and intranets, where everything tied up together, statistics and all the information that you are gathering from the field in mobile apps and enterprise software. Which is, is, is a key for what we're talking about in automating this and best right. practices. Automating any task or any, any process that you want to expedite or, or make it faster. Also about us, we are an 8A since, since 2016. We've been a minority business enterprise since 2016 mm -hmm. as well, and a, a disadvantaged business enterprise, so th those are our diversity certifications. And we've also been a gold partner for Microsoft for the past 15 years. Well, that's fantastic. And, and all of these things wrap in together for being able to utilize technology for helping in, in this process. And with us, we have Ben and Nieves. Ben, tell us about BN Group. <laughs> Hi, guys. Uh, well, BN Group is, uh, has been around for the last 25 years. We specialize, we're based in uh, Orlando, Florida. We have worked a lot in, in DC. We specialize working on planning uh, and risk assessment for critical infrastructure. But what is most important uh, is that uh, we were appointed by uh, Homeland Security and FEMA during Hurricane Maria to develop their after-action report for the state of Puerto Rico. And uh, after they, uh, we've been working with them, uh, working with the uh, after-action report, uh, we found all the root cause of everything that was failing and all the gaps that not only the state, but also the federal agencies were having during this uh, biggest uh, big, this response, which is considered one of the biggest of the United States. So we have these lessons learned. Uh, and after we finished the after action report, uh, Prima basically and FEMA decided that we were we, we had we had to continue with this process. So later on, we developed what we call the new joint operational uh, catastrophic incident plan of Puerto Rico, which captures all the all the uh, lessons learned and best practices of this major disaster. So um, basically, we, we our experience is based on what I just told about uh, planning, a risk analysis, and uh, plan development. Uh, next slide, please. That's that's fine. We'll we'll get to that, and I, I will we'll get that. We got we do have one more. We have a poll. We're going to get into all the all your your uh, information on that in just a minute. What is your biggest issue with disaster preparedness and response? Is it is it advanced planning? Is it roles and responsibilities? Accountability, very important. Is it process automation or is it something else? Let us know what you're thinking. We appreciate you doing this. What is the weather like in Puerto Rico for everybody else who is not living there? <laughs> well, it's uh, around 85 degrees today. Yeah. We have the summer every, every season, so <laughs> not cold at all right now. That's right. And that's why uh, most of us in the United States hate you. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> you can come and visit any time. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Twist my arm, man. Twist my arm. All right. We'll give you another five, four, three. You can do it. Two, one. And I promise it's not painful. And boom. Well, we got we got 73 percent this time. What we got. So here we have it. Uh, advanced planning, great roles, responsibilities, accountability, and we're all in this together, right, gentlemen? It's not like we're we're hanging out here just all by ourselves because everybody has the same issues, right? Correct. So so and with that, um, FEMA released the the national framework. It's great documentation. You can take a look at that. It is attached. It's also available by by the web. But we're talking about prevention, protection, mitigation, response, and recovery. That's what it's all about. Anything you want to add to that while we're while we're popping in on on this, um, Ben, on on what you see as a, in the framework? 
Well, basically, uh, FEMA has put this together just to make sure we all have a great, a good scope of what what we what is expected from the federal government and the state governments to be uh, considering on their planning process, not only on uh, on, the, on the paper, right, on the guidelines that we receive every year, but also uh, having this on our plans and how can we prevent incidents from happening, how we protect our people, mitigate some incidents, how do we respond, and finally, how do we recover? Basically, with this uh, framework, we cover the whole spectrum of emergency management. Uh, and let's talk about these agency issues. What are what are we talking about with agency issues? Well, basically, uh, many agencies have the problem, also different uh, kind of jurisdictions, is that they, they, they get confused many times when they receive some guidelines or guides versus plans. And as a first of all, as a, uh, we have to state the difference between guidelines and plans. Guides basically are suggestions, plans are more specifics. Also, the other issues that they have is how can I develop advanced planning and what advanced planning means, right? And I think after Hurricane Harvey, Irma, Maria, for example, Katrina, uh, everything that's going on right now on the planning area is to how can I assess the risk, how I can plan uh, towards those risks, uh, advance, uh, basically foresee the emergency and before it happens and then plan to it before we even write our own plan. Because usually planning is only like more like re on the response or the if this event happens, then I do this. But what if in this case, when we talk about advanced planning, we already foresee all the events, all the vulnerabilities, all the risk, all the impact. And then when I foresee all that, then I will be able to plan towards that worst case scenario, not on something that already happened or something I'm seeing, uh, you know, in front of my eyes. And of course, many times uh, uh, guidelines uh, just tell some ideas of what roles and responsibilities should be. But uh, on the new advanced planning strategies that we are using right now are more specific. It's, it's very detailed, tell you exactly what to do, when to do it, how to do it. And um, just uh, if you're not available, who's going to be replacing you? And of course, uh, it's very important because uh, accountability because at the end of the day, someone has to pay for everything or somebody will be accountable for whatever action they have. So uh, that's one of the solutions that we're bringing to the table now. And and you talked about guides, the difference between guides and plans. So walk us through that. Well, guides basically just a suggestion of what you should do. Uh, usually you will see a lot of, uh, you know, like CPG 101, uh, Comprehensive Preparedness Guides, guides from a, uh, FEMA, for example, it doesn't tell you exactly how to do whatever you're supposed to do. It just guides you towards a process and you have to define your own solutions. Um, the problem is that sometimes uh, those guides are so broad that people get lost during the uh, response or recovery process right. uh, because they don't have a specific task appointed to them. Also, our also, uh, recommendations are very broad also, and so it gives a lot of space of interpretation. And that's something that we learned from Hurricane Maria is that when you uh, hear, for example, in Puerto Rico, during the emergency response of Hurricane Maria, uh, uh, federal employees and state employees, they were using their plans that were based on the CPG 101 version two. Problem was is that the guides and the suggestions and recommendations, they were so broad and so, and so subjective that was people were just basically interpreting interpreting whatever they thought was best. Problem is that you're losing time, you're losing uh, money, and you're allowing people to think on their own. And then, of course, response was not that effective, and uh, that was proven, right? And guy, at least guides give you a structure of how to work within the, the system, but doesn't uh, tell you exactly where it, where are you located within the system. So that's something that is left to the planners to the, to develop. But uh, what we're thinking and the new models that we are developing are to be more specific. And to be more specific, you have to create a plan, a plan that has to answer the basic questions. And usually plans were based only on what I have to do, where I have, where I have to uh, gather, or where, where do we find that resource, how we do it, what is the process, right? Who is responsible for that? Many of, the, of these cases uh, on plan, on 
different plans, right? Answer these basic four questions. But then that was not enough. After Eureka Maria and all big these disasters, we never planned for what if, what if, if this doesn't work? What, what if, if, uh, what if the uh, person who's in charge of that department, he doesn't show up? Mm -hmm. Who's going to take care of that? I mean, uh, what if uh, all your plans, uh, basically all our plans were based on, okay, we are going to call my director. I'm going to call my administrator by cell phone. But what if you don't have yeah. cell phone? What <laughs> if you don't find the resource? What if you live on an island where you cannot um, put, to, uh, put together a convoy of vehicles, trucks, just waiting for the emergency to happen and just come in, you're in the middle of the ocean. So all those uh, what if situations are also merged with the Murphy's law. So we all, we, all emergency managers know about it. So when something could go wrong, it will go wrong, especially on these kind of issues. It happened yeah. in Katrina, it happened on Harvey, it happened on Irma, it had happened on every disaster on, on US history. So, but now with this new strategy, of adding to the equation the what if solution into a very structured planning uh, design has made us more uh, resilient, is easier, easier to understand the emergency management process, how to respond, prepare response, and recover from any incident. So I'm going to show you that. I, I love it. I love. In, in fact, it's so important to ask that question: What if? And um, it goes to how do you want to operate do you want to operate in as if everything's going to run smooth because as we know it never runs smooth and just the thought of you being an island and you can't get a convoy and oh by the way you have a hurricane that's stirring up the sea so you're not sending ships not sending the con convoy of ships either right so fantastic background so tell us about lessons learned and how important they are for everyone Something that is very important is that um, something that I did during Hurricane Maria is that I was appointed by the uh, security direct, uh, public safety director to work at the EOC and to document all the interactions that were go uh, going on during the EOC activation. And when I was there, I was doing basically uh, taking notes of what went wrong, how they were fixing those issues and situations that they had. And then after all, I developed an after action report that uh, included all those things that went wrong, how they were fixed. The problem is that usually after you, uh, after you do the after action report, you do an improvement plan, but it stays there. So the idea is to, let's not, we didn't do an improvement plan. Let's create a new plan based on the lessons learned and the best practices, because that's the actual, way and the real way on a real emergency to validate whatever you did wrong and whatever it worked how to put it onto the next plan into the ready for the next event right so the best practices are proven solutions that fix the problem of all those what if situations that we had during hurricane maria and it created of course the industry standards here in Puerto Rico, because if uh, if you can coordinate resources to an island you can coordinate uh, resources anywhere in the U.S. That's right. Because no one has the limitations that we have in, on the island. Uh, it's easy when you're in Florida and you, you have, just have to have a, st a staging area in Georgia, whatever. And in a couple of hours, you can have all the electrical trucks, water, food, getting into the area or ground zero in a couple of hours, a couple of days. In our case, the uh, port was closed for two weeks airports were closed for two weeks so basically that's what happened and then but it doesn't mean that you have like an on a, an island on the continental us but, but you have this is a good example as uh, situations that happen on isolated uh, regions that mm -hmm. just a bridge if a bridge collapses, then you have an isolated uh, region on even the U, uh, continental us so there's a lot of uh, uh things that we learn and we are putting together as a best practice. And of course, this lessons learned best practice, the dynamic uh, was good for doing a validation, right? Towards the, the new plan and the strategies that we are developing right now. And one of the things that you mentioned earlier is the importance of advanced planning. And we know that every agency is just great and flush with cash in order to be able to do advanced planning. We all know that that's the case, right? 
Absolutely, yeah. Well, the thing, is, uh, yeah, the thing is, the thing is, is uh, the most important part of advanced planning is that uh, you have a very uh, comprehensive risk analysis if you don't have the lessons learned from a real event. Um, so it's very important to have a very uh, comprehensive risk analysis. Also, foresee all possible scenarios. That's very critical in order to plan based on real events. Uh, use any other incident that happened in other jurisdictions or similar to yours or agencies, right? And always plan to the worst case scenario. I mean, uh, for, I have to go back to Maria, for example. Uh, worst case scenario in during the 2017 uh, hurricane season in Puerto Rico is that uh, before Hurricane Maria that hit us or made landfall on September 20th, we had Hurricane Irma hit USBI on September 5th. So, but the problem is that after September 5th, uh, we all were, were um, taking care of USVI. We were sending uh, commodities to USVI, even FEMA warehouses, uh, even FEMA warehouse, all the inventory was in FEMA warehouse, about 85% of that uh, inventory was sent to USVI. Nobody expected that another hurricane category five in less than 14, 15 days was going to hit Puerto Rico. And then the problem is that in September 2016, National Weather told us that it was a hurricane, I'm mean, sorry, a storm called Hurricane Maria, right? We didn't care about that one. On the 17th, it was still a category one hurricane. On September 18th, on the 5 a.m. in the morning, they told us it was still a category one hurricane. But the same day on September 18th, um, they told us that now the category one hurricane that happened that was uh, identified at 5 a.m. now became a category five hurricane only 15 hours before, uh, wow. on the same day. So I that's no a idea. record. That that's crazy. That's a that's a record. Yeah, that's a record, and that's that's your worst case scenario. Nobody would ever ever think that a hurricane 5 a.m. in the morning you would get a category one hurricane, and just 15 hours after that the same hurricane will become a category five hurricane. So technically we only have the September 19th to prepare. Hmm. And that was it because Maria made landfall on September 20th at 6 a.m. So we were feeling already hurricane wind, I mean, storm winds from the late afternoon of the 19th. The Ricans only had around, around 12 hours just to prepare for a category five hurricane. So that's Which, when we talk about worst case scenario, that's what we're talking about. Yeah, you guys got you guys got a lot of wor worst case scenario in Murphy's Law wrapped all around that that particular. Yeah, now we're having earthquakes every day. So can you believe that? Is it still happening? You still having earthquakes? Yeah, of course. Yeah, about one hour before we begin this webinar, we already had another 5.3, and everything was shaking. I mean, and the problem is that people are not really to have that seismic uh, consciousness yet. <laughs> yes. and, with all, and with all the distractions of Super Bowl and all the politics here, we don't even we don't even hear about your. We heard about it a few weeks ago. I had no idea it was still happening. So that, that's that's interesting to know. So one yeah. of the things that I really love about what you you were bringing up is roles and responsibilities and the, re, the importance of being able to define those early on, which mitigates a lot of the confusion that that happens naturally. There's confusion, right? Yeah, absolutely. One of uh, the when you don't uh, in the new advanced planning strategies that we are developing, we are being very very specific on what your role and responsibility are. Uh, what uh, we are talking about a lot about auto activation. You, I don't have to wait until I get a phone call. I should. Right. I already know what I'm supposed to do. I already have my my uh, my place my workplace defined. I have all the resources that I need to have. I have uh, even my passwords, whatever I need, I need to have it prior to the emergency. And part of the, part of the roles and responsibilities is to develop those specific tasks so people know exactly what to do without supervision. And that's the most important thing here because one of the lessons learned that we had in Maria, for example, any um, other jurisdiction is that first thing that went down was full communication. We blacked out out of, can you imagine running an emergency? Without internet, no cell phone, no telephone, no fax, nothing. nothing. No electricity at all. You got no electricity at all. Completely. I, I even wrote a white paper 
that is called uh, the Helen Keller effect on emergency management. And it's, yeah, and it explains exactly how those, the first 96 hours uh, when Maria made landfall, how her Puerto Rico state emergency management, see what was going on, they couldn't speak, they were, they, they were just isolated by themselves for the first four days. Okay, so that's that's another worst case scenario right there. So um, you're breaking up a little bit. You got another earthquake there, Al Alberto? Is that what's happening? No, we're we're okay. I think it's the <laughs> connection. There you go. And and it's yeah. so and and pointing to this, and we're going to get into some specifics. I'm going to launch a poll in just a minute, but developing those resp the, the roles and responsibilities so that things run as smoothly as possible. Because if everybody knows what their roles are and what their backup plans are it's much easier to adapt and and the rest of the confusion that's going to happen because you're going to get thrown curveballs because there's going to be something new murphy's going to step in every time and it's also right? important the training part and the exercises and drill because most of these plans they get written and then nobody looks at them until the catastrophe and then yeah. it's too late so mm -hmm. it, it, you need to practice and you need to really do the exercises and the drills and I'll and I'll I'll use that as an example as to why the Ravens weren't in the Super Bowl <laughs> because they were off for three weeks and they got rusty. Imagine not not paying attention to a you you do your you do your emergency response plan and it sits on the shelf for six eight ten months maybe a year right because you didn't right. have you don't have hurricanes every year you may have tropical storms and things that hit but you don't have a Category Five that goes bam bam every year. correct. Right? So, so there you go. So now here we, we're getting into one of the, the, the biggest topic here is what have you had, have you ever considered automating and what that means? Because this is, this is brand new to so many folks that about consider automating emergency preparedness and response. Yes, you have software that helps you automate. We're in the process of evaluating uh, automation software. No, you didn't even know this was an option. Close out. Let's see what we got here. And it's pretty split here where we have 33% have software that helps. They're in the process. And then 50% love that because that's what we're going to talk about next. And we do have some questions and I will get to you, uh, Jesus. I will get to you and I, I will get to you, um, Maria. And we will do that. Let me hide that and get back on track here. We'll get us going. So um, we're going to be talking about what em automating emergency response looks like. And Ben, take us through this if you can still talk. Can you talk? Can you hear me now, right? There he is. Yes. There you go. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> okay. Go well, what you're seeing here, guys, is just one page of the new Joint Operational Catastrophic Incident Plan that I developed for Puerto Rico. And basically, it, uh, it begins with, in case of a hurricane, it begins minus 120 hours. And tells you based 120 hours, it goes back to down to nine, minus 96, 72, 24, landfall, and then we go plus 24 hours and just keep going on that timeline for the next uh, technically 30 days, right? So you will see on your uh, column on the left is the time. In this case, plus 24 hours, and we're going to tell you what you're going to do, where, uh, the time, right? When? The next column is tell you, uh, tell, tell, it's going to tell you a function. It could be special populations, it could be special, it could be search and rescue, it could, it could be anything, administration, human resources, whatever. Then on the next column, you'll see tasks. These tasks are very specific. It could be like uh, minus 96 hours prior to a hurricane or, situ or incident that could be foreseeable, uh, like check your EOC, uh, ins make an inspection of your utilities, uh, send an email. In this case, for example, it could be like provide risk communication to special uh, populations, consider sign language and other description during messages. Mm. See, it's basically guiding you during the whole process. Then which ESF is responsible for that or emergency support function, which agency is responsible for doing that task, which is, is uh, who is your support agency, right? Who's gonna help you do that, right? Or what this task. And then the most important thing about this planning strategy is that you have two additional columns. One of them is the limitation columns, which you put there, all the Murphy's Law, things that could go wrong, 
thing that you uh, things that were uh, part of your lessons learned from the prior events or okay. some results of a risk analysis, vulnerabilities that you may have and situations that may you may have during the response or during the emergency. And if after you present or you uh, uh, document right that limitation, next step on the last column will be the contingency towards that limitation. And there you have who's going to do it, when it's going to be done, right? What are you going to do? And then the last columns tells you what if this could not be performed or this task could not be performed, then you have your contingency right there. That's what we call advanced planning. I'm always foreseeing exactly very detailed of everything that you're doing. And if that cannot be performed, it couldn't be done because for any kind of reason, I can't find a contractor. Uh, there's no enough fuel on my, on my generator. Um, we lost communication. So all that goes into the limitation column. And then finally, it, uh, you have to uh, determine which, which contingency was necessary to address that limitation. Uh, technically, the idea of this kind of strategy and planning is like uh, anyone can, that could read and follow directions will be able to manage this emergency without worrying about making mistakes because the mistake is already written or the situation is already written on the, in the plan and it's a step-by-step -step, uh, plan that tells you exactly what to do and answers all the questions that we talked about before. And and one of the questions we have has to deal with interagency type uh, communication as well because you have state, local, you have uh, coordination with, with boots on the ground. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a minute. And one of the things I think is really interesting about the automated process and tying tying people together electronically best you can, right? Because if everything goes down, then you may not have the electronic components. But what I love, tell me if this is true, where uh, we're going to take a look at the Plan 2 Ops, which is it's a, it's a software, it's an automated process, right, that, that you guys, that both Alberto, you and Ben, that you work together on to develop a process and then the communications can tie in together and the and different agencies can use this, right? Yep, that's right. Well, like I explained to you before, you saw that table before. The problem is that when we finish the plan, we finish with around 1,400 tasks between 32 agencies. Hundreds of so, pages. So we had 1,400 <laughs> tasks. Nothing could go wrong with that, just saying. <laughs> But, but, you know, the thing is, uh, and uh, guys who are listening right now, they know that uh, we spend a lot of time and effort developing plans and people, they don't follow the plans or they don't read it. And that's when we come with plan to us. We're making sure planning, uh, how do you make your plan go to operations? Make sure that ops guys, operation guys, follow the plan. So what plan to us is, is basically, an app that takes your current plan, right? If you put it on the system, on the platform that we developed, right? And it will automate all these tasks and it will send push notifications to the people who has a role or responsibility during the emergency. So let's say we have a hurricane that is coming or, or any other incident, right? We will, will activate your, um, you will activate your uh, hurricane plan as soon as you activate your hurricane plan, you can do it on a desktop or your cell phone. All the people that has a role or responsibility in, within that plan, they will all receive a push notification to their cell phones, telling them exactly what they should be doing right now. They will interact with you or the supervisor or who's the person who's in, in charge of uh, managing that emergency on your agency. They will receive uh, a notification they will accept that notification. Um, they will you you as a, or the emergency manager, right? Will we will have a dashboard? Well, he will see what percentage of those tasks are being uh, in, are in progress at requested assistance. How many have not started yet? How many are overdue, right? And how many are completed? So Talk it's about giving you right? huh? Talk about accountability, right? Everybody exactly. knows what they need to do and, and you get reported on what's happening. Exactly. 
within also within the task they are sending to all your uh, personnel in your agency they will have the the gps location of what that where where that resource is is located it's not telling you go and get more field go get this fire truck whatever the location of that fire truck is uh, geolocated so is on the on the task that you're receiving and uh, the, the thing is that also it provides you a chat where if you have any kind of situation let's say you need to know how much fuel you have left in one of the buildings you're working on and they have a situation where probably they don't find a key to get access to that uh, fuel tank they could uh, activate the assistance button and it will tell it will technically contact with your um, supervisor or the person in charge to uh, talk to that person, send him pictures, uh, send him any kind of documents also. So it's allowing them to uh, begin this conversation and tell him, hey, I don't have the key, I need to have access, all the kind of stuff. So the beauty about this app also is that it eliminates human error because now you're not allowing people to think they're what they think they should be doing. The plan is so specific and with the app, it's synchronized with the app that we are obligating the guy, the people who are responsible to do what the plan says, right? It's telling you exactly what to do, when to do it, what if something goes wrong, which alternative you have. And of course, your director or administrator, administrator of your office has full accountability live. So he can see how many people are doing their job, their task. You are not relying on phone calls. You're not relying on anything like that system also could work without internet it's because the the software will be on your cell phone as soon as you regain or reconnect with the internet then it will just synchronize Great. the only feature that you will lose will be just a chat because it requires a all the cell phone towers but the rest of the applications and uh, processes that the apps uh, gives you you will be able you can add as many uh, emergency plans as you want like for active shooter earthquake tornadoes hurricanes, tsunamis, business continuity, business, uh, evacuations, fire, whatever. It's limitless. You can just, we just have to program your plan into your um, account, right? And you will be able to involve and have all, the, all those people who has a role or responsibility to be uh, all to, working all together, uh, having full accountability for everything that they're doing. Another thing is that it, it will help you to have track of all their actions because it has a history that is recording every single interaction that you're having after you activate the plan. Right. So that means that as soon as I activate my plan for the first time, all the interactions, even everything that we talk, we talk through the chat, it's being recorded. So right. you don't have to have an after action report. You just print it out from your from from plan to ops website. So it will be immediate. If, uh, if, uh, if your boss is asking you for an uh, internet uh, report or immediate report, you don't have to put nothing together. The report is building itself on yep. the on back end all the time. So based you have on, to Based on the fact that you have your disaster plan in place and then it Correct. gets put into the app and, and it runs. And this is what we're talking about with, with automation. And I think that it may reframe some of the folks and their thinking. So let's find out where they're, what they're thinking as far as when they expect to have a plan a disaster plan requirement because in order to implement this you have to have your plan first right guys the, the plan gets put into the app the app doesn't make the plan right correct so so with that and we do have questions and i want to get to those questions real quick i know jesus has one that he's been he's been waiting for uh what about the management by local governments that's exact that's a great question because it's not just about FEMA, it's about driving that down through the other organizations, correct? That's right. We can, in fact, right now we are developing the new earthquake plan for the island and we are mm -hmm. integrating the local governments into the same plan planning strategy. So we are also adding them as part of, of this uh, on the app and also on the new planning strategy. We can also help you, uh, help your agency if your plan is more like a guide not like a real like very tactical plan like just just like the one that i showed you yep we can also provide that service for you so we can make that transfer of guidelines to specific tactical plans right. so we we offer the full service 
All right, let me get another three, two, one, and you can do it. Boom, let's see what everybody says here. A lot of folks have an, a disaster planning requirement and the, coming up Q3, Q4, we appreciate that. And it's obvious that the people that have decided to join us today from all the different agencies know that they have requirements that are coming up and they know that they need to, to be included in that. Uh, if you have any additional questions, uh, just pop open that panel. I do have one, uh, let's see, can I get a copy of the presentation? Absolutely, that will be coming. I, I'll, I'll follow up in just a minute with how that will happen. And someone mentioned an MOU. I've heard there's a sample MOU for hospitals. Can you point me to that? Uh, my team looked up and there's somebody that did one from calhospitalprepared.org. So C-A-L hospitalprepared.org. Uh, is one place that, that that that's not FEMA oriented, but at least it gives some framework for there. Uh, that may be what you're talking about. If that doesn't meet your expectations, let me know. There is a sample. Uh, there is the, the 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 instructions for the MOU is actually in the handouts uh, for for you as well. Let's see what we got here. There's another question. Hang on. All right, I think that's it. I think we had, because there's a couple of people that asked about the presentation. So we'll we'll go ahead and get going. So staying out of hot water. I like this one. Plan, 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 automate what you can. I love that. So there you go. Isn't that, isn't that what we're talking about, guys? Plan and then automate where you can because you want to dish that off so that it gets it gets put into, into practice right away. Follow those best practices because guess what? A accountability does matter because without accountability, you're not going to be embracing the improvement that's necessary to help you, your agency, and other agencies, and ultimately delivering on the mission of being able to help folks that are that are really in dire straits. I mean, when you're out of power for for four days and you're in in, in blackout, right? It's, you know the Helen Keller syndrome, right? That is amazing when you think, if you just think of the, the, the trouble that that, that that creates. So vet your vendors, make sure that you're choosing good vendors that have great past performance, number one. Number two, that really understand the industry and use BPAs and GSA schedules. That always helps to get those in place ahead of time with your vendors, correct guys? Correct. Yep, correct. all those things. And speaking of one vendor that you may want to to check out this is invid this is you mr lugo uh That's with invid <laughs> small disadvantaged business there's dunn's cage you guys are gsa schedule holders correct correct schedule 70 and you're also 8a as you mentioned uh that happened in 2016 so you have uh, several years left on that uh, gsa schedule 70 as you mentioned and then through partners you guys are in the hub zone running though right yeah, we, we, we should be hop zone in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we start in the process and uh, our new facility, our headquarters are moving to a new facility, which is hop zone uh, compliant. So we are starting that process now. That's great, because I think you were right across the street from hub zone last time I checked. Correct. <laughs> if you're not familiar with hub zone and how that works, it's kind of it's kind of interesting. Um, but it is it is in most agencies need hub zone and if you need service disabled because of veteran owned uh, partnerships as well so you will well, get let me let me say something real quick if you engage with a company that it's based in puerto rico you get double points on your set aside for uh, minority businesses so that's another good uh, oh, option i did not know that thank you very much all right that is fantastic so you will get a recap email next week. It will have the briefing presentation for you, Maria, and, and whoever else asked for that. The supporting documents that came that are here, if you're having trouble downloading those, Invid capabilities, Q&A, as well as a link to the video. So you can watch this over and over and over again uh, uh, as many times as you want. You can submit it to the Academy Awards if you like. Uh, and with that, we're running a little bit over, but we appreciate you guys bearing with us, especially in the questions and answers. Alberto, thank you very much. There's your your information. There's Ben's information. You can reach out to any of us directly. I, I don't have any decision-making authority or capability to help you, but I will definitely connect the dots with you and Ben if you need to reach out to me. So any party Thank you for things? having us, David. What's that? Thank you, thank you for having us. <laughs> You're welcome. So uh, but we really appreciate it. Thank you, Ben. Great information, Ben. Sounds. I always love to have insight from folks that have been through been through the ringer and you guys have been through the ringer both of you 
Thank you. So we appreciate you guys and we will see you next time. Any any final questions? No final questions. So we're gonna let everybody go. Thanks for joining us and uh, for letting us go over by five minutes. We appreciate it. Thanks much. See you guys. Mm -hmm.